the next speaker was our piano player. Dr. Klotz. And that, that Dr. Klotz, is there anything else you want to add um, in terms of what he said? Well, he, uh, yes, the, the gray zone. I don't know if you remember, he mentioned that. He said, you know, there were a number of questions in here about, you know, why are, are doctors still doing this when there's better information? And, and I think his answer, the gray zone, was the best answer I've heard. That the doctors don't want to exploit people to their disadvantage, but there's, there's always a section between treatment and no treatment where people aren't too sure what to do, called the gray zone. And in that gray zone, the people that do treatment for a living are going to default to treatment in the gray zone. And in prostate, we have a fairly big gray zone between people that don't need treatment and those that clearly do need treatment. And uh, so I thought that was a nice illustration that, that to not just paint a bad brush that all these doctors are evil and trying to hurt people, but, but that there are, that the people that are doing things that we wouldn't agree with can justifiably say, this is a gray zone, you have your opinion, I have my opinion, and there's definitely truth to that. So it's, it's where the patient should be making the decision and not be influenced by the, the physician. And the patients need to be aware of these gray zones so that they know that their physician's gonna tilt one way uh, based on what they do. So my, my concluding slides, the gray zone. Um, those of you who are familiar with this field may know that there's a lot of provider preference in how patients get treated. You know, you see the radiation oncologist, the urologist, the surgeon, and so on. Really, it's a huge problem in the field. Man with a hammer, everything is a nail. So my view is the problem is the gray zone because I think very few physicians want to make a living doing the wrong thing. But if they have treatment options, if there's a gray zone, their, uh, their personal interests, the fact they are surgeons will influence them to offer surgery and so on. This is, this is kind of human nature. So we've had a huge gray zone in this area until recently. But now I think we've moved, and, and this has been part of my mandate, make it black and white. Great group one, Gleason six, particularly, you know, um, smaller volume. This is no longer in the gray zone. No one should be treating these patients. It's black and white. Now the gray zone is the intermediate risk patient. Uh, partial gland ablation, definitely in the gray zone. I happen to be a firm believer in the role of partial gland ablation for these favorable intermediate risk patients. They have in most cases, indolent disease, it's innocuous therapy, it just makes sense. And then you have the high-grade patients, we still are gonna be treating them with surgery and radiation. Those, those are effective therapies for patients with aggressive disease. They need it, it's life-saving. Still some overlap with both with the, mainly with the focal, uh, with the partial gland ablation story. But the whole point is to kind of reduce the gray zone as much as possible though, so that provider preference can't play, uh, play so much of a role.